Um, I, I overheard questions regarding fireworks, uh, affordable housing, public transportation, taxes, flood protection and dredging, roads, casino, uh, the responsibility of property owners, traffic cameras and fines, how do we attract new business, how do we grow the city, what's with the downtown roads, uh, city ordinances, specifically nuisance ordinances, tax incremental financing, otherwise known as TIFs, um, gun violence, neighborhood associations, um, distrust of government, and the last one, which is not related to the previous one, sewers. <laughs> I'm sorry, that was cheap. So, you know, the good news is that there were so many of these issues that were discussed at all three tables. So that tells me that, you know, you, the citizens, are uh, in unanimity on a number of key issues. Uh, the four questions that we will pose now for the next to the last section are questions that I'm not sure were asked at any table, but if they were, they weren't asked at all three tables. So indulge us. Um, we're going to take each answer in order starting now we started with Damien on the introduction so now we'll start with Lisa to answer the first question then we'll go to Tyler then we'll go to Damien and the first question is what are issues facing veterans that the City Council can impact Well, like I said earlier, um, I've worked with um, at Abbey Center for Community Mental Health um, with adults with mental health disabilities. I had several veterans that I worked with. Um, they, we do have a, a good support through the Veterans Administration. I think the biggest challenge is to get the information to the veterans. I think there's a lot of assistance out there that they don't know of. I think it's the communication to reach out to them. Many of them are homeless. We need to get out on the streets and talk to the homeless people and find out if, you know, some of them don't want a place to stay, but many of them don't know where to reach out. And I think it's appalling that our country have uh, homeless vet veterans. So uh, I think that there's a lot of grassroots effort we can do there. We need to line them up with the correct services. Thank you. Damien, what do you see as issues facing veterans that the city council could impact? The cities that's facing our veterans are not only the homeless issue and the mental Ill illness, but also employment. And I believe that if we partner together as a uh, team of councilmen and mayor, that we could um, provide services that will help our veterans get in a better place that will help deal with the, that mental illness, that will help deal with the unemployment, but also the housing issue as well. Um, we should not have, especially living in the United States, a um, any veteran that's homeless. I, I mean, there's no question that the city and well, the community and the nation owe a particular uh, debt of gratitude, and so. We need to identify those issues, and, and I think um, they've identified them uh, pretty clearly. The big ones already. One is uh, housing, jobs, um, and and any kind of uh, support that they need, you know, to deal with issues that have arisen uh, from from their service. But I think it's a great example of a way ways that the city of Cedar Rapids can collaborate with other governmental entities. Um, when you look at what the county does with uh, Don Tyne, for example, um, who is the uh, veterans liaison, um, deals with getting folks the mental health they need, the affordable housing they need, identifying those issues, um, and the city then needs to be a, a play a role in finding the solutions uh, to those issues. So I think the city, the city in, a lot of issue, in a lot of ways could do better with collaboration. Uh, this is a great example of that. 
Hold on to that mic because you get to answer this next question first, Tyler. And then we'll go from Tyler to Damien and Damien to Lisa. Uh, what is your understanding of Black Lives Matter and how will it shape your service on the city council? There's no question that there is an issue in our country, uh, in our state, and although a lot of people um, might not believe it, in our, in our city with trust, right? I mean, I think ultimately uh, a lot of the issues that have been raised about equality um, have, have been a lot about trust. People feeling like their leaders are not responsive to the issues uh, that they have in the community. And so to me, we need to work hard at building that level of trust. Making sure that voices that have not traditionally been heard uh, at the city level, obviously running for city council, are heard. I mean, it's, it, I think, is one of the most important things that's going to be key to our success going forward is going to be engagement and trust. Uh, and that means every part of the community, uh, no matter uh, if your voice has been heard or you feel like it hasn't. And to me, that ultimately is, is the role of a city council person, uh, to hear the voice uh, in particular that hasn't been heard, because there's a lot of places uh, where people have, have been able to uh, express their opinions in the past. Thank you. Damien. Not only am I an advocate of Black Lives Matter, I'm African American, but I'm also an advocate of All Lives Matter. But in particular to the question which you asked, I believe that Black Lives Matter in particular, because there, there are many times the African American uh, individual or the people of color, their voices are not, are not heard. And so they need someone that's going to champion a message um, that's going to advocate for them to make sure that they are heard. Um, most of our people are, are, are operating from a hopeless position and uh, they're struggling because they don't think that their voices are being heard or respected. And so no matter what race or color you are, no matter what status you are in life, I believe that we have to make sure that we represent a movement that there's not only Black Lives Matter and we advocate for African American people, but also that we advocate for all lives and that comes with diversity and transparency, to make sure that we not only um, sympathize with individuals, but also we empathize, walk a mile in their shoes. Thank you. Lisa, what's your understanding of Black Lives Matter and how will it shape your service on the city council? Um, well, you know, there seems to be almost, and I know it's not intentional, but there seems to be like this divide this argument in our country about black lives matter no blue lives matter and you know it, it which is the police officers and i think we need to focus more on all lives matter and as as damien said but um one thing that i think we've come far in in our city and it shouldn't have taken this long but we have a police chief that took several years to finally admit that there was a gang issue and uh, we can't really address the problem unless we identify it. So it's really sad to say that that was like an earmark in our progress in recognizing the black community and the attention we need to spend on helping them engage in our community and not alienate them, but as Damien said, provide the services that they need. And I'm stopped. But I don't have to be, I could go on, but Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, um, Damien, you'll be the first responder on this one. Um, what is one thing that you would do to cut wasteful spending of city tax money? The one thing I would do to cut wasteful spending is to focus on what's needed most or what's the main priority of our city and we can look at the several issues that our city face, be it uh, affordable housing, uh, to make sure that our public transportation runs at least 24 seven, so on and so forth. But I believe that one of the most important areas of our city is the, is the flood protection. And so I think we should focus more so on that because if we don't focus on that flood protection of our city, then if another flood comes within a year or so, no matter what large buildings we build, no matter how attractive we make our city, 
if there's no flood protection, then we'll find ourselves rebuilding the city all over again. Thank you. Lisa, you're next on this question. What's one thing you would do to cut wasteful spending of city tax money? Well, there's a long list. Um, I've been a you only get to say one, though. <laughs> I only get to say one. <laughs> yep. Oh, my gosh. Um, well, I think, uh, I, I, I think, first of all, I, I know I wouldn't be able to control the TIF handouts to these developers, what I call developer hand, uh, welfare, but so I would sit there and say nay, but um, the change orders are a huge issue in our city that people aren't aware of because when you're watching the city council meeting, uh, if, you, if you look at, if you do go to the agenda, there are pages of a consent agenda. And within that consent agenda are all these change orders. So um, I would strongly advocate to have accountability with those contractors. What they do is they get a bid, they, they, uh, they submit a bid. When they get the contract at that amount, they keep coming back for more change orders. Thank you. No, I'm sorry. No, no, I'm sorry. I'm talking to my phone. Sorry. No, I saw the stop. <laughs> Tyler. I mean, ultimately, the, the budget comes down to a community's priorities. And so the, the most important thing is, is getting input from people that live in Cedar Rapids as to what things they want the city government uh, to fund. When I was in the legislature, we worked on a budget that was $6 billion, right? And so, you know, how do you go through a budget like that? Well, you go through it by getting input of the people that it affects. Finding out what works, measuring results, uh, making sure that you're not just spending money because you did last year or the year before or the year before. Uh, so to me, it's a line-by-line -line approach uh, to the budget uh, that gets citizens input on what's important to the community uh, and then ultimately has some measurable accountability in it as well so that if it's not working, we can uh, cut it the next year. Thank you. Okay, our last question for this section. Uh, we'll begin with Lisa, then we'll go to Tyler, and we'll go to Damien. So, this questioner thinks that it's important to understand what objectives the City Council is currently undertaking by attending City Council meetings. Why have you or have you not attended City Council meetings? And if you have not been in attendance, why are you still prepared to serve? And we'll start with Lisa. Well, I've gone through, I've gone to a lot of city council meetings. Um, a lot of my uh, uh, comments at the council meetings are on YouTube. I follow I, the agenda, I follow the budget, and uh, as I said before, I follow the consent agenda. Um, tens of millions of dollars are passed in that one vote without anybody knowing what's in it. Um, I go on, attending a council meeting, you really get a full grasp of what's going on in our city and what our city leaders are supporting and standing for. Because the comments that they make, they don't include them in the minutes. And it's, it's interesting to hear, you know, like I'll hear about a topic uh, that somebody's, you know, that, that uh, somebody, uh, I'm stumbling here, um, I'll hear about an issue somebody will bring up and I can tell you who voted for it and comments that they made in the council meeting. And that's how you get to learn who's really representing you and who's not and where the um, improvements can be made in the agenda itself. Thank you. Tyler. Uh, I've been to, I don't know, a handful, I guess, of, of city council meetings, uh, particularly related to uh, projects that I've been interested in or I believe that are uh, important to the community. I think ultimately uh, I'm qualified, as I said in, the, in my opening, uh, because I have a unique mix of private and, and public sector leadership experience that I think we can bring to bear on taking advantage of the opportunities that we have and solving some, some of the challenges as well. You know, but ultimately I think anyone's uh, qualification is, is based on uh, listening to people, right? Listening to the people that you serve, figuring out what's important to them, uh, what can, and then really going back and devising the things that a city can do 
in order to meet some of those uh, issues that people bring up. Uh, I think that experience, like I said, that I've had uh, allows me to be able to get it done because uh, we all have a vision, I think, for where we want the community to go. Uh, and we need people who can go ahead and, and get it done and execute on that vision. Uh, and I think I can do that. Thank you. Damien. Okay. I must admit that I, just, I started just a few months ago attending C, uh, city council meetings, because uh, not just because I was running for city council, but also because I, but I was interested in knowing uh, the ins and outs of our, of our city. And I want to be a better servant leader if elected or not, to make sure that I am advocating for people, all, all, all in Cedar Rapids. Um, I know that there are dollars that's, that's passed. I want to be able to understand those dollars and not only those dollars, but also uh, what those dollars are going to and what they're covering and what our tax dollars are paying for. And so I want to be able to make sure that I am uh, representing a city and, 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 and citizens and communicate to them uh, to the best of my ability, uh, where their tax dollars are being spent, hear their voices, listen to them, and make sure that I take back to the city council um, uh, what their needs are. Thank you. Okay, uh, we now move on to closing statements. Uh, each of the candidates has two minutes for a closing statement. Um, we will begin with Tyler, then we'll go to Damien, and we'll close with Lisa. So, Tyler. Thanks, Libby. And thank you all of you again for, for coming. It was a, a great conversation. Uh, I think we all enjoyed it, at least I did. Uh, and I think it was a nice format of being able to actually hear from people and, and have a conversation as opposed to kind of standing up here and giving a speech. Uh, something that struck me today was a, a question about um, about the roads and the, and the ballot language and, and what can we do about it. And, and it really got me thinking about uh, trust. Uh, trust in uh, leaders in the community, uh, whether it's elected leaders or people that serve in other kind of leadership uh, capacities. And I think that's something that we need to work on in, in Cedar Rapids. And, and it really, I think, speaks to a, a number of issues and maybe a solution to a number of issues, whether it's flood protection or roads or public safety. Um, and, and it gets down to trust. And, and to me, that's, that's built uh, over time using a very deliberate process. Uh, it's about listening and engaging. Uh, one of the things that I loved about serving in the legislature was doing the office hours where you said to everybody, I'm going to be at the IV Deli uh, from 10 to 11 having my breakfast, and I'd love to have you join me. And sometimes people did, and sometimes they didn't. Um, but you really got a chance to, to meet people in their world, hear what was interesting to them, uh, and I hope that they left with a feeling that I'd heard them and that I was going to take that input with me to, as I made decisions. Uh, and that's what I want to bring to the Cedar Rapids City Council. Uh, I want to help build trust. I want to hear what people say uh, and be able to turn it into uh, actions that the city can take uh, in order to make our community a thriving community, an engaging community, and an inclusive community. Uh, because to me, a community with those three things is going to be successful uh, in the next five to ten years. And I think we got to have them in order for us to keep our success moving forward. I appreciate your time and would appreciate your vote in November. Thanks. Thank you. Damien. It was John Legend who wrote the song, We're Just Ordinary People. And I'm a believer that ordinary people need a voice. Ordinary people need, need a leader. And too many, uh, for too long we've had at the table extraordinary leaders, extraordinary people, uh, and they pass leadership on to other extraordinary people. But I believe that ordinary people need to be heard as well. And so I uh, stand as not a politician, but a servant leader for all people, for ordinary people, because I have a heart for this. I am running simply because, I believe, again, ordinary people need a voice. As I've uh, knocked on doors throughout this short campaign, I've heard um, petitions of, of, of others about how they're disgruntled with our city government. Um, I've heard their heart, and I've had an opportunity to to meet new people and to and and to listen to them. And I just want to make sure that I take what I've heard back to the city uh, as a councilman, and if not elected as a councilman, as still a servant leader to help champion change for our city. I believe that uh, any one of these candidates 
any one of us would serve as a good councilman. So I have both, I have respect for Tyler as well as Lisa Caselli. And so, see you on November 7th, and uh, keep us living in prayer. Thank you. Lisa. So uh, for me, my main three platform issues, people ask me what my platform issues are, and I have literature outside, is that we need to focus on eliminating waste. And there are several avenues to do that. It's difficult to pick one. And um, the second thing is to fix our roads. And the ballot language was so broad that it does allow for the expenditures that the city is, is uh, spending our money on. Uh, and I, as I said, I follow this, and they've actually spent our Rose, roads money to acquire properties, to buy properties. And this was one of my predictions, because I, I have followed city politics government extremely well, and I knew that how they were going to use this. So they are buying properties for new streets. Now, we can tighten that language. A state law allows that. We need to get a petition, bring it to the voters, and tighten that language. And I know how to do that, and I know how to get that done, and I will get that done as your city council person. Um, I have advocated for individuals at, uh, with, at the city, state, and federal levels, and I'm going to continue to advocate for individuals. I'm aware of an awful lot of individual issues here in the city, and I already have their trust. They've seen me over the years. They've seen me stand up for them. They've seen me stand up against all odds. And I'm going to continue standing up. Only this time, I'm going to be able to help people on the inside. So elect me on November 7th, and I will be working for you. Thank you. Um, you can, thank you, Damien. Um, so I'd like to close the forum by thanking all of you um, especially our candidates uh, for participating in quintessential democratic process. This would be a really good time for you to applaud for these three candidates. I would also like to thank the Cedar Rapids Public Library for providing space and to the voters if you haven't done so already, you can vote now. I mean, you don't have to wait until November the 7th. So please vote. Uh, a representative from the Lynn County Auditor's Office uh, has information outside. If you happen not to be registered yet, easy to accomplish. Don't